Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide Let's look at another example of osmosis. This is shown in Figure 3-22 called Tonicity. Here we have three beakers and in each beaker is a cell. This is the cell in the solution. Now, for convenience, I've described the cell as having a concentration of water and a concentration of solute, and I use it, I di di diagram it like a fraction. So, for example, the cell is 95% water and 5% solute. Just a convenient way to express water and solute concentration. Now, if we place that cell in a beaker that also is 95% water and 5% solute, the beaker is called what compared to the cell with respect to tonicity? Well, the solute concentration is the same, so the beaker is isotonic to the cell. Now, be careful with this. Does any water move out of the cell? If you said no, you're wrong. Water does move out of a cell. Now remember, cells are surrounded by plasma membranes. With very few exceptions, all cell membranes allow water to cross. So water moves out of the cell. What do we call the movement of water through the membrane? Osmosis. Does any water move into the cell? Yes, it does. It moves into the cell just as easily. The membrane is not like a one-way valve, so water is also moving into, cell, into the cell. Is there any difference in the movement of water? No, the same amount of water is moving in both directions. Is osmosis taking place? Yes, it is. Osmosis is the movement of water through a cell. However, let's put the cell in another beaker. Let's put it in a beaker that's 90% water and 10% solute. Now, the beaker in this case is called what compared to the cell? Well, the beaker has a higher solute concentration, so the beaker is hypertonic. Notice, though, beware. What is it that's crossing the membrane that we're concerned with? Not the solute, but the water. So pay attention. If a beaker is hypertonic, that means more, sol uh, more solute. That means less water. Now, does any water move out of the cell? Yes, it does. Does any water move into the cell? Of course it does. Is there a difference in water? Yes, there is. More water moves from water's high to water's low concentration. Exactly like we described with the 2,000 and the 4,000 description. More water moves from high toward low. There is a net movement of water. What will happen to this cell? It's losing more water than it's gaining. The cell will shrink and die. Have you ever made homemade ice cream in the backyard? You know, you add water and salt to the churn, and you grind and mix it, and you spill some water on the grass, and the next day you get up and you notice there's a big brown spot in the middle of your yard. The grass has died. Why? Because you spilled the salt water onto the grass, and the salt resulted in loss of water from the roots of the plant. The plants, the grass, thirsted to death. You know if you're cast adrift in a life raft, you can't drink the ocean water because you'll die. Because instead of gaining water, you actually lose water by osmosis. You'll understand more about how the kidney works in A&P 2. All right, let's look at one other example. What if you put the cell in a beaker that was 98% water and 2% solute. Now the beaker is what? 
hypotonic compared to the cell. Now, hypo means less, but in your mind, think of that as meaning more water. Does any water move out of the cell? Yes. Does any water move into the cell? Yes. Is there a net movement? Yes, there is. More water moves in than out. What will happen to this cell? It will swell and burst and die. If you put red blood cells in distilled water, the red blood cells will swell and burst. It's called hemolysis or hemolysis. Lysis, remember, means to dissolve. Hemo refers to blood and blood cells.